We've discussed before that when we have a moving conductor in a magnetic field of constant strength, the magnetic forces inside of this conductor that's moving to the right in this case, where the magnetic field is pointed into the page, forces the electrons, the free moving electrons, down to the bottom of the conductor, which exposes protons or the positive charges near the top of the conductor, and it creates a potential difference or an electromotive force. This moving conductor basically acts like a battery. We call this motional EMF because m the motion of the, con of the conductor creates an electromotive force or a potential difference, again, li acting like an ideal battery. If we were to place this moving conductor on a set of conducting rails so that this thing slides to the right on these rails, we basically now provide a pathway from the positive side of something acting like a battery to the negative side, uh, and we essentially get current flow. And so we have a loop of wire that's uh, increasing in, we'd say, like surface area, or the inside of this is uh, increasing in surface area, there's, a, there's an induced current inside of that loop of wire. So today we're going to look at other situations uh, where we can induce a current in a loop of wire, <clears throat> not by moving part of that wire, but by changing something about the magnetic field. So we're going to look at not a square loop of wire, but just a round loop of wire. And we're going to leave that loop stationary, and we're going, to, we're going to change the strength of the magnetic field inside of that loop. We're going to first look at well, what happens when we increase the strength of the magnetic field, in this case, let's say, pointing inward, or what happens on that side of the wire when the, the field strength stays constant, or what happens when we decrease the strength of that magnetic field. Is there any induced current inside of that loop of wire? Let's find out. So. Uh, I just have a permanent magnet with a north and a south pole, and we know that permanent magnets uh, have magnetic field lines that come out of the north pole and wrap around and go into the south pole. Remember, a compass can tell us the direction of the magnetic field. You can see that the red is pointing away from our north pole, so we have magnetic field lines going straight out to the right. We've got a coil of wire here, and we call those solenoids. And I'm going to take this magnet, this north pole, and I'm going to move it towards our coil of wire. And so we're going to have magnetic field lines uh, pointing to the right, and as I move this toward, it'll get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. So let's just see what happens. Uh, I also have uh, an ammeter micro measuring microamps hooked up to our solenoid. And this is just, there's no electropotential difference. There's no battery hooked up to this. So if there's current flow in these wires, in these loops of wires, uh, it should register on our microammeter. Uh, depending on which way the needle swings to the right or the left, uh, we'll be able to tell us which direction the current is flowing through those loops of wire. So let's find out what happens. So if I take our north pole of our magnet and I move it towards and then stop, you can see that that, that needle swung to the left. So there was evidence of current flow while I was moving the magnet towards the coil of wire. While the magnet's inside of the coil of wire, there doesn't seem to be any current flow or induced current. And if I remove the magnet or remove the north pole and move it to the left quickly, we see that the needle swung to the right. Let's try that again. So move the magnet towards the coil, swings to the left. If we hold the magnet still, there's no current flow. And we remove the magnet. Again, now the sweet old needle swung to the right, indicating that the current flows in the other direction. So what's happening here? Well, it seems like, let's think about what's happening to the magnetic field inside of the solenoid. If the magnet is still, there are magnetic field lines pointing to the right inside of our loops of wire uh, at some strength. And as the magnet gets closer, the magnetic field lines are still pointing to the right through there, but it's the magnetic field strength is getting stronger. So let's increase the magnetic field over time. We can see that there was current flow. Now the magnetic field is strong pointing to the right, but it's not changing in strength. So it seems like there's no induced current. And if I remove the magnet, we're going to the magnetic field will always point to the right, but as I remove the magnet, the strength of the field will decrease. Watch again and we get evidence of current flow. So it seems like we're only getting an induced current, flow of current in those loops of wire, 
if the strength of the magnetic field is changing. Uh, this is known as Faraday's law. When you have a time-varying magnetic field inside of a loop of wire, there's a circular current that gets created or induced uh, inside that loop of wire. And we saw that we only got current flow, evidence of current flow, when I move the magnet, because moving the magnet changes the strength of the magnetic field inside of that coil of wire. If I do it fast, you can see the faster I do it, the greater the change in magnetic field strength per unit time. So the, the greater change rate of the magnetic field strength, the greater the induced current. So we can change the magnetic field strength by moving a magnet in and out of this coil of wire. I guess the question is like, which direction will that magnetic field produce a current flow? What's the direction of the current flow when we get induced current? Well, we'll have to think about this a little bit deeply. Let's go again to our permanent magnet. And remember, when I move the north pole to the right, it's increasing the magnetic field in the loops of wire point to the right. So that's increasing to the right. The magnetic field in the loops of wire and our needle deflected to the left. So let's think about that. If our needle deflected to the left, that means this black wire uh, was connected to the high potential side and the red wire would be connected to the low potential side because our galvanometer, our microammeter, swings to the side of high potential, which means the current was flowing this way. Well, if we look at our loops of wire, they're wrapped around like this. And if we use um, our third right-hand rule for figuring out the direction of the magnetic field when there is current moving through loops of wire, remember, we curl our fingers in the direction of the current going through the loops of our right hand, and our thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field. So when the magnet was creating an increasing magnetic field to the right, the current that was induced in here, which flowed around in that direction, wrapped my fingers, produced its own magnetic field pointing the other direction. So as the magnetic field got stronger and stronger to the right, the induced current created a magnetic field to try to counter that change and go back in the, the direction. So it tries to resist the change in the magnetic field strength. So notice, uh, I've been holding this magnet inside the coil the whole time. The magnetic field is strong. It's not changing, so there's no induced current. Now I'm going to quickly remove the magnet. We can see that the needle swung to the right, indicating now the current is flowing in the other direction. So when I removed the magnet, there was a strong field to the right. And as I removed it, the field got weaker and weaker and weaker. And remember previously, we said the induced current created its own magnetic field to try to counter that change. So if the field was pointing to the right and got weaker and weaker over time as I removed the magnet, we would expect that the current in here would be induced to move in the direction that would try to strengthen the field to counter that weakening field. And so if the needle swung to the right, that means that this was the high potential side, the black was the low potential side, and if we look at the windings of wire, that means the current was flowing this way, the wires wrapped that way, so that means the current was wrapping now in this direction of my fingers, and it did produce, uh, our galvanometer indicated that it did produce a magnetic field pointing to the right. This idea is known as Lenz's Law, that Whenever there's an induced current in a coil of wire, when there's a changing magnetic field, the induced current will always be in the direction so that the magnetic field that it creates will be in the opposite direction of the change in the magnetic field. We saw that when the magnetic field strength got stronger and stronger in this direction, the induced current created a magnetic field backwards to counter that. And when we decrease the strength in the magnetic field in this coil of wire. So it was pointing in that direction and it was getting weaker and weaker and weaker. The induced current, while the magnetic field strength was changing and getting smaller, was induced in this direction to try to strengthen that, to try to 
oppose that change. And again, that's known as Lenz's Law. So as a summary, we found out that when there's a changing strength magnetic field inside of a loop of wire, there's going to be an induced current, uh, and that's called Faraday's Law. Faraday's Law says that a changing magnetic field strength will induce an EMF, an electromotive force, which is what causes the current in that loop of wire. And when we think about the direction that that current is in, uh, that was known as Lenz's Law. So Lenz's Law tells us that the direction of the induced current in the loop will generate its own magnetic field, which is an opposite in direction to the change in the external magnetic field. So let's just look at the three examples that we saw uh, demonstrated with that solenoid and the permanent magnet. So let's imagine we're looking at one end of the solenoid, kind of looking straight on, and we're going to bring a magnet in so that the strength of the magnetic field is increasing while pointing into the page. So it's increasing in strength. We know that Faraday's law says that as the field strength is increasing, there's going to be an induced current, and Lenz's law tells us the direction. So if the field, the magnetic field strength is increasing into the page, the induced current is going to create its own magnetic field trying to resist that change so it's going to point out of the page so it looks something like this. As the dark blue magnetic field strength increases pointing into the page, the light blue magnetic field points out of the page and this gets, gets created when there's a counterclockwise current flow. Remember we use our third right hand rule so your thumb points in the direction of the induced magnetic field and your fingers wrap in the direction of the induced current in this case counterclockwise. Let's go back and see it one more time. As the external field strength increases in, the induced magnetic field is pointed out from a counterclockwise current flow. If the magnetic field strength is strong or weak, but it stays constant, Faraday's law says that there will be no induced current. If we take that now strong magnetic field strength pointed in and we weaken it, let's say by removing a permanent magnet, as the field strength decreases in size, as it changes in strength, Faraday's law says there's going to be an induced current and again Lenz's law will tell us what direction that current is in. If the external magnetic field is pointed into the page and is decreasing in strength, Lenz's law tells us that the induced current is going to try to counter that change. So if the field strength is weakening in, the induced current will produce a mag its own magnetic field in the same direction to try to counter the decrease. Let's see what that looks like. As the external field gets smaller, the induced magnetic field tries to strengthen it in the same direction, and if we use our right hand rule, in order for the magnetic field to be into the page, we have to wrap our fingers around clockwise so the induced current will be clockwise. Let's go back and look at that one more time. So if the external field decreasing, decreases in strength, the induced current will be clockwise, creating an induced magnetic field into the page.